hello there and welcome to this training video. I'm Casper, I'm the CEO of Skahoy and it's my greatest pleasure to take you through a training on the basics of our technologies in a series of videos. So we have a PDC Pro with us. This is how it would arrive with DHL at your location. You uh, open the box. Okay, so it's a cardboard box, that's tricky. And inside you'll see power supply. Inside this box there's power supply for um, a power outlet, Ethernet cable, USB cable. The USB cable is used for configuration. We'll do that in just a second. The Ethernet cable can be both your power source and the signal source. It's the power source if you have a PoE switch and that is how we are going to use it. I'll just put this aside because we don't need it in this video. So we'll just take this over here. And then we find inside the box, there's the PDC Pro down here. Let's see if we can get it out. Uh, maybe we can lift it like this. Uh, there we go. All right. So we try to protect it really well in the case. All right, good. So let's move this out of the way. And what you also found inside is this inlay card. Inside of this one, there's a piece of paper telling you what the controller does out of the box. So we wanted it to be super easy for you. So since our controllers can support a lot of different things, the challenge is how to ship this to you and make it easy out of the box to get it working. So what we did was make a slip like this and whoa, you'll see there's a lot of configurations. PDC optics, ADA cameras, Sony cameras, Lumens, NewTek, Panasonic, and so on. But we are lucky today because as it turns out, NewTek is the currently installed device core or configuration on this controller. So there's a slightly good chance that it's gonna work out of the box. So that's what you get from this piece of paper and you'll see it found inside. Whoa, that's a handsome guy. You'll find it inside this cover that also gives you all the instructions that we're going through here. Let's put this aside and see how it connects. So the challenge is getting this connected. So I drop in the Ethernet cable and you'll see the LEDs is lighting up now because I actually get power over Ethernet. That's super cool. And then I need to see if I can plug in the USB. So USB is only for configuration. Ethernet is for power and signals in this case. And what we're doing right now does not require any, any um, online connectivity on your laptop or anything else because we are uh, lucky enough that this controller should talk to those cameras out of the box, but we need to set the IP address. So what we do, what I've done already, is to download the Skahoy firmware updater application. Go to our website in the support section, you find a link to the firmware updater. So download that on your uh, computer so you can actually access the controller you see. It has found the controller by this slightly cryptic string USB modem. I now click the IP configuration button and a window will pop up that tells me that the controller currently has an IP address which is static and it also tries to talk to a new tech camera on uh, this IP address. Now, first of all, I don't want static. I want di uh, dynamic IP address for the controller itself. So the new tech cameras would have to, uh, I enter the, the IP address of the first camera. So this one, the first camera is 210. And the way the controller works is that by uh, at, um, entering the first camera address, it's gonna search for camera two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and so forth by looking at the next IP addresses. So that's gonna be IP address 211, 12, 13, and so forth. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna save the IP address right now. And by clicking that button, it is written into the controller that the IP address now needs to change. And you see the controller is booting. We see the logo screen there. And now it's gonna be exciting. There we go. And voila. I can see that it's connected because these buttons, camera one, four and five, they light up green, slightly green. And now it's, it's a brighter green. So, I also see something else. When I'm, I'm, I'm toggling the cameras, you can see that these um, exposure settings are changing because each camera are apparently set up differently. On, on this camera, you can see I'm controlling that camera. That's great. On the other camera here, I'm now controlling camera four. And if I go to camera one, I'm controlling this one. So we don't have a two and a three. Apparently, the, um, these cameras over here must, ha must have had, had IP addresses like 200, uh, 13 to 114 since um, there's a gap there. 
So, um, well, this is something I've covered in so many other videos, but we are super excited about the fact that this information here is actually pulled out of the camera. This is why you see it's different. In our controllers, we do everything we can to get a two-way communication going with the hardware. So we ask the camera, what is your current exposure mode? Instead of just having a dumb knob that will force it onto the camera. We like to know what is in there already. So that is how we uh, define quality in our company. Now, if we go to the first, uh, actually, you just saw them work. It works. I just set the IP address. It's talking to the cameras out of the box. And that is basically what I wanted to cover in this first video. Unpacking, connecting the firmware app, setting the IP address, and go. Now, there's a final thing I want you to say, um, understand. In the next video, we are going to look at how we can pull something from an online repository. We are going to change to a different type of camera from a different brand. And in that process, we are going to overwrite the internal memory. So keep in mind, if you're using this way of setting IP address, when you make an update, just a firmware update, it might happen that the IP address needs to be set again. It might default back to what is in, in the uh, firmware that you, you pull down. Just keep it in mind that when you do any updates, you may need to go and reset the IP address of your controller. So let's dive into basics number two, the next video where we'll look at how to change the configuration to a different brand of camera.